I'm, I'm Jeff Hirsch. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for GE Healthcare. And Cindy, would you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Cindy Owen. I'm the Director for Clinical Insights and Development for Point of Care Ultrasound. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the new automated tools that have been developed uh, for Venue to help Point of Care Ultrasound, uh, specifically to help Point of Care Ultrasound aid clinicians in their evaluation. And today we're going to focus a little bit on those tools and how they're going to aid um, clinicians to evaluate patients in shock. Yes. Why did we even go here to begin with? Oh, because shock is an important medical problem. In emergency and critical care, there's over, uh, just think about it, there's over a million cases of septic shock alone each year in the, UN, in the United States. So and just septic shock? Just septic shock. So for so the ER, means, they have traumatic shock and hemorrhagic shock and all kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, so it doesn't yeah. even include those types of shock. And of that one million, at least uh, a quarter of those patients are, are not going to make it. They're going to die. So it's a very complex situation that's faced by um, both emergency and critical care physicians, and they have to make rapid decisions to save these patients' lives. Uh, so we wanted to find something that would ease the complexity and speed up those decisions and, and give them some support. So basically, a pretty common disease, which is a pretty serious disease with difficult outcomes, the outcomes are known to be a little bit better if you can diagnose it and initiate appropriate therapy sooner, and that's kind of what motivated us to do it. Absolutely. So I get that. What kind of tools do we have? Can you just give me a little bit of an overview? Of those sure. Tools? We have uh, three key tools that are used um, to help the physician with shock. And in, in shock, it's very important to evaluate the heart, uh, the IVC, the lungs, um, and the main vessels. So we've developed tools that would help uh, with that. For example, in the heart, we have a tool that's called the auto VTI tool. Uh, we have to evaluate the cardiac function in shock. And in resuscitation, we need to know uh, what the stroke volume is and actually to help improve the stroke volume. So the auto VTI tool will actually, uh, when it's activated, place a region of interest over the area of the LVOT. And within that region of interest... Uh, LVOT, just remind uh, the, uh, the left ventricular output. Okay, right. got it. Okay. Yes. And within that region of interest, what it's going to do is fish around for the very best Doppler signal. And it's going to display that in real time, and it will automatically trace uh, the waveform and give you the LVOT um, just in the matter of a few heart cycles. Okay. And is that the only tool? Or? No, there's two other tools. It's also important for us to evaluate the inferior vena cava. That way we know uh, what the volume status is for the patient. So the auto IVC tool will actually put an anatomical M mode over the IVC and then tr automatically trace the boundaries of the IVC over the respiratory cycle and calculate the cava or collapsibility index. And then a third tool is the auto beelines tool. So we know that uh, we need to look at the lungs for, say, pulmonary edema. Uh, so um, beelines are, it takes a long time to count beelines, and it takes a long time to follow up patients with beelines. So uh, what we have is a tool that will automatically highlight the beelines, and then upon freeze, we'll jump to the best frame and show the maximum number of beelines in that frame. Then there's a graphical interface that goes along with this tool that shows all the different lung segments, and it'll actually walk the user segment to segment uh, through the lung, and so they can use that for follow-up as well. Okay, so, so basically I can get an idea of my preload. Have I primed the pump enough? Because you can look at the IVC for me. I can get a look at the pump. Is the heart doing well? And then have I overdone the fluids? Am I starting now to kind of go down that slippery slope where too much of a good thing turns out to be a bad thing, and you can look at the, um, the lungs for me and tell me if I've done that. So I, I can see how that would be really useful. So there are a lot of protocols out there to evaluate patients in shock, and these are actually out there being used. There's a lot of different ones, and I can do that with a lot of different ultrasound machines. So what, what's different about the new tools that you've developed? Yeah, so we're, you know, th you're right. There's a lot of protocols that are out there. So we're not inventing a new protocol. We're not inventing new medicine. But what we're doing is making, taking the hard parts and making them more simple. You know, for example, if I, uh, in a patient with shock, if I were the clinician and I needed to get the cardiac output, what I would have to do is, is um, measure, uh, put the roll the patient up, look at the uh, five-chamber or three-chamber view, um, turn on my color, place the ROI, turn on my Doppler, place the sample volume in exactly the right uh, location, get the reading. Now, then next I have to go and automatic uh, trace this because I don't have an automatic trace. Um, do the measurement. Then I have to go back and get a different view, the peristernal view, to look at the LVOT, measure that, and then finally after all of those steps, I get a cardiac output. Uh, what I can do with this new tool, though, is just 
press a button, it says Auto VTI. After I've gotten that uh, five chamber view, it places the ROI in the region of the LVOT. It automatically does that Doppler fishing for me and gives me the waveform, automatically traces it, and gives me that, that VTI as well as the cardiac output. Okay, so, so the goal is here not to have me doing something different, but to have me do what I want to do and what is kind of out there and is accepted and hopefully tried and true, but to do it more easily and do it in a more animated way. Uh, so this is pretty exciting and, um, you know, obviously I see how this could have some clinical benefit. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And um, this is really just a down payment on what GE wants to do to help the physician with their critical patients. Okay, so I'm going to take that as a commitment that there's more to come. There's more to come. Okay, very nice.